Welcome to the Synapse Philosophy Group. And uh, I'm excited. We're on an awesome chapter of BJ Palmer's final book, Volume 39, Our Masterpiece. And uh, we're skipping just a little bit. We're page 94. And the title of this is there is, an, there is an Innate Adjustment. And he's saying that with power, all in bold. And uh, it is the title of this chapter. And uh, I'm going to start right now. Anybody have anything going on? Anything you want to discuss? All right, let's rock and roll. There is an Innate Adjustment. For many years, as a developer and world authority of chiropractic, we have maintained there is an innate, adju innate adjustment brought about as a result of a concussion of forces contained or delivered in a manual adjustment given by competent chiropractor. There has been evidence in various ways to justify the existence of this theory. It has not been until recently that actual concrete proof <laughs> has been possible between vertebral changes as shown in a series of spinographs where merely a matter of personal or combined personal opinions. What do you think he means about that last sec that last section right there? There's been evidence in various ways to justify the existence of this theory of the adjustment concussion forces contained what do you guys think? I'll keep going on. Well, he's saying that that until recently they didn't have hard evidence that there was the innate adjustment. He feels that it, that that you know, that that we you've been seen on by based on opinion of um, personal opinion and uh, that there's changes on uh, vertebral changes shown, but that doesn't mean there's been a correction of the adjustment. I like the line in that previous paragraph about the concussion of forces contained or delivered in the manual adjustment given by a competent chiropractor is it refers back to you know that it's a concussion of forces that it's an it you have a and uh you have constructive and destructive survival values and you have it, it it can you have a concussion of forces from the outside in and inside out that are working uh, that that force comes in from the outside and then innate adapts that force it's a concussion of those forces the, that was that the open. whole answer right there absolutely all right i'm going to keep going yeah a chiropractor or group of chiropractors could take a series of films of a patient and study them in a view box with results they could they could conclude that certain changes had taken place as the result of the adjustment but that conclusion would be an opinion only opinion only and nothing more there would be no actual measurable means to show the exact change while calibers and rules rules can be used to measure vertebral changes question excuse me i'm just cracking up question of man i can't read with my <laughs> excuse me uh, question <laughs> of Patient's posture would be one chief objection raised in mind of the scientist. Uh, if there was variation in patient's posture from one series of films to other series in making comparison, naturally, many changes in vertebra in, vertebra in question or in general spine contour might be shown, which would not be true changes of the vertebra or vertebra conclusively. Exclusively. Exclusively, exactly. Excuse me. Thank you. While this method of comparison would uh, actually did disprove old medical propaganda. Uh, somebody, you know, excuse me. I thought of somebody's beeping in. Uh, that chiropractors could not move a vertebra at the same time. It still had too much of personal opinion element in it to make strictly scientific. Major changes were, of course, apparent. Only, uh, they were only obvious. It was that these obvious changes in position of vertebra under adjustment, uh, which broke down unjust medical claims that vertebra could not be moved. They did move, 
and could prove it by x-ray pictures of before and after adjustment. The minute finer details, minute. Felt minute, finer details and changes uh, were matter of fact opinion, uh, were matters of opinion in those days, and a layman or anyone not thoroughly familiar with osseous x-ray shadows, they meant little, if anything, even assuming posture had been duplicated. Yeah, get, taking precise films is what he's saying, really, and repeatable, being repeatable with it. All right, you guys want to read? I'm like, I'm getting lost in my reading here. <laughs> sure, okay. I, I am. You know, with these glasses, I still can't find my sweet spot really to read in, you know? Yes, they're progressive, but, you know, whatever, I'm getting used to them. Who wants to read next? Alan, you want to go? Sure. Today, such changes are no longer opinions, but facts shown in measurable and precise form of strictly scientific nature. By thorough study and understanding of later developments in technology of spinography and comparative interpretation, it is now possible to show there is an innate adjustment or setment of a subject subluxated vertebra after its, properly, after its proper manual adjustment. It is such theories as this and others that the BJ Palmer Chiropractic Clinic <clears throat> offers the finest facilities available in any science to bring about proof. It is this clinic which enables us and our associates to develop new and advanced methods of chiropractic practice, always with sound foundation of our chiropractic principles and philosophy, and always with thought and effort to get sick people well more quickly and efficiently with pure, unadulterated chiropractic. It has been through correct, uh, it has been through direct approach to these problems. That is, in matter of, and spirit of scientists, these problems have been solved in the BJ Palmer Clinic, chiropractic clinic. Personal and pet ideas, favoritisms and prejudices have been cast aside for the truth of these matters, in these matters. Science has a hard and ruthless way of demanding most exacting standards one could expect in any field of work. It is the complete disregard of feeling and personal opinions that make scientists what they are, and facts which they concluded, which, which they conclude, I think that's a misspelling, it's, that's why I stumbled over it, sorry. And facts which they conclude and established scientific. Such is the code laid down in the B.J. Palmer Chiropractic Clinic. It is the code which seems cold-blooded at times, for it stops at nothing, nor does it deviate from hard and fast rules necessary to arrive at facts and truth. I'm making a, I, I correct all those typos in my book, sorry. Work contained in these sections was obtained from scientific research and development in the B.J. Palmer Chiropractic Clinic on actual everyday living cases in attendance at the clinic. We discussed two major developments in spinographic technique, which made it possible a third development or conclusions reached there is an innate, there is an innate adjustment in fact, and not merely in theory. While this third item is not perhaps strictly a development, it is a conclusion reached through a study of scientific facts found in our new work of comparative interpretations. The two major developments are, one, posture constant and precise spinographic equipment, two, subluxation adjustment x-ray graphs. Posture constant forms the basis for foundation for graphs. Graphs show a concrete, measurable, and understandable form, exact and precise changes in position of a vertebra or spinal column as a whole when under adjustment, three, this work has brought forth a third item or conclusion reached regarding actuality of the innate adjustment, which we have focused mainly to Atlas and Axis since, it, since Atlas is specific for causes of many diseases. We find there are three general classifications of innate positioning, each with three subdivisions for Atlas and two general classifications for Axis. One more theory will thus find its place among the list of established facts in our science and make possible a better understanding of what takes place after a chiropractor manual adjustment has been given. 
Now, what is an innate adjustment? Well, he's saying that they're validating it now by doing better control of the their X-ray technique and positioning of of patients that they're uh, when they take the pre and post X-rays. But he's not giving an explanation of what you know a, a an adjustment to the natives. He's talking about mechanism. He's talking about um, Atlas and taking proper X-rays. But, you know, even Clarence Gonstead, one, one thing he said is you can't see a subluxation on x-ray because you can't, you, you, you don't know about nerve interference from an x-ray. Well, BJ here is talking about that he can, that he, they can prove that the change, he's saying that previously the x-rays they took were, in, were ne not necessarily consistent pre and post. They so weren't repeatable, so, right, in, in the so same that it was posture. an opinion that something had changed. He says, what, what we're doing here now with our very precise, and in uh, in one of the sections we skipped about the precise positioning that's used uh, to take the films. I follow you that. I follow that. But he was and, really not so talking if you about. Take, if you're putting the person back in the exact position and the bony positions have changed, then that's a, then that's a proof of a change in the, in the uh, the, I'm going to give you mind. this. In reality, he's talking about stepping around innate. He's coming from the most educated way possible right now in his, his this explanation. And uh, to me, that is more, you know, if we're talking about innate, we're talking about a little bit more esoteric. We're letting the inner inner wisdom do its job. Here is that I'm taking over that wisdom. And I know what is right for you. If we think about that, if I know exactly where your body is supposed to be at all times, I wouldn't have time to take care of my own body. And that's the first thing I think of. Yeah. So, Hank, I can see that. Um, and I firmly, I, I see more like Alan does here where he's trying to scientifically explain and prove, and especially in this title of this chapter, innate adjustment, you know, you and I would think he would go down the philosophical hole, but because of the previous chapters, and he is talking about the scientific leg of, hey, here's our clinic, and not only is the equipment being set up, but we're also coming up with x-ray technique that can then be reproducible for us chiropractors. Now we have a technique that we can do this, you know, instead of just talking and giving opinions. Yes. So he's just being scientific on how, how we're proving that innate adjustment. I follow you on that. And I follow that as well. And he's saying, we've taken the guesswork out really. And, you know, I mean, I've got head clamps, I've got an x-ray chair, you know, all these things for, to try and repeat the x-ray the same way as we did it last time. Right. And, uh, you know, that is, and I guess that's the scientific, it's, it, we have to be mechanical in some way for descriptions as well. For me, I was just hoping for a little more juice out of our yeah, own yeah. philosophy is what it was, because it was a perfect time for philosophy. It really was a timing for it, but, you know, that's my own thing. And he's getting into the next chapter, which is posture const constant. And uh, that's the big deal. Um, you guys signed on, okay? Am I correct? Yeah. Because I yeah. Start otherwise off, we wouldn't be message. talking to you. <laughs> huh? Otherwise we wouldn't be talking. I to know, you. but it wasn't a problem. We've had that in the past, though. No. Uh, Dave said, you know, he's like wakey, wakey, like he signed in, but maybe I sent you that. You sent I sent, sent you that? wakey, wakey. Oh, that's you. I thought that was Dave Sarnoff. I didn't have the number saved. I just saved it. Okay, so that's you. My apologies. So yeah, no, I said that right, right, a couple minutes after eight. I thought I said, well, I wonder if he just got so busy, spaced out because yesterday was a holiday. <laughs> no, my mistake. I apologize. I, I just got home to eat. I'm yeah. changing this to Alan Lichter. Okay. Oh, Alan. All right. So let's start this next chapter. Just, if we want to keep going there, but that's fine. Um, in building and developing the posture constant, it's been necessary to have special cal calibrated devices attached to or made part of the x-ray equipment in the BJ Palmer Chiropractic Clinic. 
The type of work conducted in X-ray laboratory demands precision built equipment that it does that it does accomplish this work, proves it honestly, gets what it demands. To give a general working idea of the equipment, it is sufficient to point some of the major pieces of apparatus. Chief among this, these is the chin measurement, which gives a constant posterior skull line on all AP views, the diagonal stereo and lateral natural views, as well as natural or stereo eight by 36 full spine pictures. It is used with sitting and standing postures. This measurement is made with a cork in the patient's mouth for AP views, but in diagonal and lateral views, it is made with mouth closed. Correctness of this measurement is entirely dependent upon correct height and angle of the bucky. Another important measurement is made from top of head to top of bucky. This enables us to check on cases which are relaxed in one day, at one date and rigid at another date. Sitting up, to sitting up to straight one time or slouching down to much another time. This measurement is interdependent with chin measurement and is very important in establishing posture constant. Two basic measurements in this work are height of the bucky from the floor and height of the tube in relation to center of film or bucky from the floor. Do we wanna keep going on, on this detail stuff here? Peg, you're, well, you muted yourself. Sorry about that. So Alan, Alan and Hig, I was looking at this too, cause I was thinking of the technicalities of the posture constant and we were looking at the x-rays. What about jumping to page 107? Which yeah. is at the end of this this technicality of the posture constant equipment. I, I, I want to so, just yeah. I want to add one line. I'm going to read one line of this. Sure. And this is on page 98, second paragraph, uh, last sentence. That seems to, yeah. Only a nate of patient knows posture, which is most natural to that case, and it is under those con conditions we desire to study and determine the subluxations. So. You know, I think that's an important thing of taking consideration that body and that innate and, uh, you know, not everybody is symmetrical and all those things. I think that's an important statement. And now I'm ready to move on. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I'll, can I can I jump onto that too, Hig? So, you know, even and he's specifically, uh, well, he's talking about specific x-rays and, and he's really talking about upper cervical specific x-rays. And that's something that you know, us season docs and us three know this too, that, you know, I constantly have to tell the younger students, like, listen, this is that person's innate and soul and spirit up there for a, not even a split second, like a hundredth, a millionth of a second of time. Yeah. So don't, just because that reading is that at that moment, do not hesitate to, to not base it on that and to retake those. Absolutely. That's such a good point. It's a, just a blip in the moment of time. Absolutely. Well, you know, actually that next paragraph after what you read is, is what consolidates what we, the things we've been talking about. Uh, it was pretty good. Why don't we finish that paragraph then? Can you hit it up? I can't, where am I? Yeah, I've got it. It's a 98. It says, yeah. it is a different matter to adapt the equipment to case for primary posture and reporting and to adapt case to equipment at some subsequent time when desired to duplicate that original posture. In first instance, case assumes natural po position most suited to that case. But in second instance, we replace case ourselves, even granting such position may not be natural. If we are to make an accurate comparison of subluxated vertebra in original position with conditions which originally existed, we must be able to go back, as it were, to the patient's original posture. Then true extent of vertebral change cannot possibly be shown. There would be no relation between first spinographs and last spinographs to be compared and with such condition with no relationship between the two. We would not actually be making a comparison at all. Thus, we see necessity for posture constant in comparative spinographic work. In other words, that goes back and it says, we, we put them in whatever natural position they were in when we took the first set of films. We know the second set of films 
or third or fourth, whatever they're doing, we're going to put them back in that original position because then if their posture is the same as it was and the vertebrae are, whole, are in a different position, that means something has changed. The body's changed that adapt, and adapted that, that, those vertebrae and, and changed something for purpose. What do you think about, do you think he, you know, I don't know about any instances when BJ did uh, non-weight bearing x-rays. You know, would that make a difference in this? I'm not sure if there is an instance that I've read where no, I don't think he did. I don't think he did either. I don't know if that would make that big of it because I, I prefer I even tell the my, you know, you know, if they do x ray somewhere else, I mean, they've got to uh, I, I like to have them weight bearing. Yeah. You know? Oh, I always I, I always send them I, when I send them out, I send them. I always say weight bearing. And yeah, it makes more sense. All right, well, let's because you're we're, we're dealing with these issues that are partially related to working against gravity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an important factor. You know, if you when you lay somebody down on the table to take a lumbar spine, it doesn't always. It, it sometimes you lose that curve. Yeah, absolutely. Or they'll even have them bend their knees when they'll sit when they're on the table for those films, which guarantees there's gonna, not going to be a lumbar curve in a supine position. <laughs> hey, Barry, since this is your section 107, you want to read it? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Title, Will Chiropractic Become Lost in Complicated Methods of Scientific Application? For many years, we as chiropractors have pointed reasons for failures of invasionary medical practices due to, due to complication, multiplicity of methods and theories. This is true in medicine. Its practice is a conglomeration of theories and practices. There is an ever-changing line of pet theories, practices, and fads. There are new serums for this and that, new antitoxins for one thing and another. They change monthly. Some are claimed to do wonders and are later found to be actually harmful, but none remain in medical practice any length of time. They change as often as styles because they are fads, not scientific facts. Medically, case cannot be treated until diagnosed. Percentages of incorrect diagnosis is very high. An average medical, pra an average medical patient practice, sorry. Hence, the percentage of incorrect treatment is also high. It becomes a guessing process. Even if diagnosis is correct, physician must then choose any one, hundreds of different drugs, serums, or treatments for a given disease. There is nothing specific and clear cut about the practice of medicine. The reason is simple. Medicine does not have a specific principle or set of principles upon which to work and govern its practice. Unless we have principle, foundation upon which to base work of theories or practices, they become lost in a maze of complications, running headlong in no particular direction. That same idea applies to a profession, business, or organization of any kind, and also to individuals. We can never reach the top unless we have a principle or a definite plan upon which to work. We must have aims and ideas. We must know where we stand as individuals and decide upon the limits. We will go in certain directions. Decide what we will and will not stand for. We must know how far we will deviate from the straight and narrow road and attaining objectives. Some people stray and go in and out of all kinds of ways, of byways and reach on theoretical goals. Others seldom, if ever, leave main road or lose sight of goal ahead. That is the difference between individuals. It is the difference between working on principles or working on pet ideas, fads, and fancies. One will get you there, other will not. One will get sick people well, other will not. Principles make that difference. Barry, let's pause there a second. You know, I always say, you know, what all the, from Tony Robbins, everybody else out there, and, you know, BJ Palmer was saying stuff like this of really, you know, choose what's really important, go after it, go full steam ahead, you know, think innately. Um, you know, there are a lot, there's a lot of good principles of life right there, really. Uh, I, you know, that's, this is where we get our, the other parts of our philosophy too. I like it. You guys get anything out of that? 
think you said it well. All right, let's keep so moving. true. It's true. Chiropractors from over the world visit the BJ Palmer Chiropractic Clinic. They marvel at scientific equipment, elaborate furnishings, color schemes, and extensive space it covers. They feel this is the idea in any profession or science. And it is finest in chiropractic or any other profession. We have at our command finest and most accurate instruments for making chiropractic records of physical and mental conditions for patients. No expense has been spared in purchasing or having specifically made scientific instruments or in building special laboratories and ground shielded booths on which to house them. For instance, the neurocalligraph, which is an advancement with the neurocalometer, making possible automatic recordings of neurocalometer readings of graphs, is installed in a grounded, shielded booth made of copper screening, iron, etc., in which all outside energy is eliminated. All radio waves, Hertzian, electric, and magnetic waves completely blocked out of the booth. This makes neurocalligraph accurate and precise. There are no outside variables entering this picture. This grounded shielded booth idea is even more elaborately and extensively carried out in the laboratory of the electroencephalo-neuromentipograph. This instrument is so sensitive and highly complicated that, re that it requires two grounded shield booths, one for instrument proper and the other for patient connected by the grounded cables. Not content with the ordinary installation, not content with the ordinary installation of the electrocardiograph, we built a grounded shielded laboratory for this instrument, keeping out all variables which might interfere with absolute accuracy in making recordings. Same applies to electrocardiophon, audio cardiograph, recording sphygma monitor, heartometer, live detector, etc. They are used under more ideal conditions than inventors intended. Every effort has been made to make automatic precision recording scientific and fact accurate beyond possible doubt. From microscopes to x-ray apparatus, from chemical laboratories to new work on brain energy, from medical instruments to chiropractic instruments, the BJ Palmer Chiropractic Clinic can boast of finest obtainable. We on the staff are proud to be a part of this organization because it ranks top-notch in science and in scientific work conducted within its walls. Some of our chiropractic colleagues, however, see all we have here and go away wondering whether or not we have gone into the scientific side of this work to the extent that chiropractic will become lost sight of in the process of compiling scientific facts required of each case. They wonder if we are not leading in the same direction as medical profession, which we have often criticized for getting into complicated fields. They wonder if we are getting things too so complicated in chiropractic, it will be lost. Someone who walks in here for the first time and makes a tour through clinic in an hour's time may be justified in thinking these things, but no one has a more clear cut idea of the direction he is going than ourselves. So intense is our mind on a single specific objective that we naturally that we naturally imbues the rest of us with that thought and feeling. We know where we are heading and what our purpose is as individuals in our departments and distinct phases of work. Each department head, while he has scientific facts to obtain in his particular sphere, is nevertheless in constant association with other departments and their doctors. Let's pause. We could easily imagine. Let's pause a second. You know, there's a lot going on in there where, you know, I must have been amazing there. I, I would have, I don't know if I've really read anything from the people that worked at BJ Palmer's clinic. You know, when I'm thinking that, I mean, there must have been a big team of, you know, just regular workers, not just the students, but, you know, everybody else that, to manage a clinic, but all the research and stuff. I'd love to hear from those people. You know, I really would, because just listening to, you know, all the stuff that he built Faraday cages and like, you know, to, to make sure everything is precise, we're not getting interference from anywhere. And, you know, must he must have just looked like some amazing scientist to an average person like, oh, my gosh, who is this guy? I, I mean, I'd be an on now, right? Building from scratch. It's not like calling Amazon or going down to, I was going to say a radio shack, but that doesn't exist anymore. But, uh, 
Yeah, he, everything he had, to, he had, he had to think of it first, plan it, have it created by some technical person to put his, you know, the the genius into reality. It's just amazing. He had to know that there were all those things that could interfere with these instruments to decide yeah. that he needed to find a way to block all those things and then figure out a way to do it. And that's all new science at that point, too. All new, right. That was all he still had to be new aware science. that the magnetic energies or electric energies or radio waves could all affect the instruments that he's doing these readings with and say, what happens if we block these? Will that change? Will that give us a purer data database to work with? Let's let's build this stuff. How can we block it and let's build it? It's so cool. I mean, it's just it's just super cool, you know. Um, there was another part in here. I thought that was really great. But oh, just walking into a clinic, I, I really had one of the best compliments from a chiropractor not long ago. Um, I invited him to come to speak at one of our band of brothers. We're doing a Saturday Night Live thing. And he goes, there is no doubt that this is a chiropractor's office. You know, there's nothing to confuse anybody. It's chiropractic. And I thought, man, that felt really good. You know, that's, that's a compliment from a chiropractor, right? And, you know, basically he's saying those things too. But, you know, what do we think about all the complications? And back then people trying to sell all sorts of gadgets to chiropractors, just like now. And, uh, you know, we're going to be able to recognize this thing. Really, that's he's, also, he's also saying here that people would come into the clinic and, and their first impression is, is all this stuff getting away from the chiropractic principles? And, you know, and it, are you getting so lost in the science? And he's saying, and he says, he's refuting that statement and saying, we are totally focused, as he said earlier, you know, we are totally focused at the purpose of all this science is to validate the principles that we've put forward. Yeah. Period, the end. We're not doing anything other than working to validate the principles here. We're not doing anything else here that's going that, to that's gonna change anything. You know, there is no, you know, every experiment has value. Whether it measures the thing you intended to or not, you know that machine might not work for this. Okay, we'll move on. And the amount of mistakes, you think about... How many mistakes you need to make to get to the point where you're actually making your measurement properly and you know what you're measuring. It's just truly amazing to me with the thermocouplings and all that stuff, man. I mean, it's just cutting edge. The neuroencephalo tempograph, what is it? <laughs> um, but, you know, all those things and, and being able, and trying to measure innate intelligence while we're doing these experiments, not leaving that as a variable. We can have it as a, as a measured um, uh, a quality and be able to use that in the outcome of our experiment way before. I mean, still modern, and I can't say modern medicine, it's just our current time medicine doesn't even factor into those things, right? He was really cutting edge and was really working very diligently to do solid experimentation and it just it's 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 cool to read i know it's kind of dry this stuff and a lot of it is really dry but you know what it's it's awesome and it's a i think we should keep them in amazement and in absolute i mean reverence because it, they it, they did a lot and it's it's they were it's worth it so yes. Yeah, you know, he, he briefly mentioned this lie detector test here, and he mentioned all these other tests before. And from what I remember reading and hearing is that he had like the second one ever. The first one is at University of Chicago, I believe, where it was made and invented. And he, he wanted to prove like, okay, your physiological response, your innate response, you can't hide, you can't lie. Hence, we know this lie detector test. Well, he, he was researching this and bought it for the clinic to prove innate intelligence, the autonomic nervous system response. And what happened was the local police and sheriff offices, officials got a hold of this and they would bring in subjects who they wanted to arrest for bank robberies and had them hook, to, hook them up to the test here at the clinic. And we're arresting them. He became an expert. He was an expert in reading yeah. the, the data, right? 
Yeah, and we we were that profession that had like this lie detector test that we were using for physical scientific proof of our physical adjustment to that spiritual entity called a name. Now, you know, I and, thought, I mean, I most thought, people don't talk about it that way. Correct. Most, yeah, all you hear is that he was an expert in reading lie detectors, not that the why? reason he had it was to help determine how help to find out if that was another way to determine, you know, to, to check on innate and what's going on and what the body's doing. Right. And Nate's not lying, right? She's yeah. not going to lie. Yeah. So. That's so cool. You know, I thought BJ had a hand in creating that lie detector test. I thought it was maybe, maybe he had the beta, but uh, I, I, yeah, I believe he had input because, you know, if you had the number two machine, you spent over a hundred thousand dollars for it back then. And here yeah. you are a chiropractor. They're probably gonna ask you like, all right, what do you like? What do you, you know, what, how, how's this working? How's that button? What's this? What's I'm yeah. sure the engineers got a hold of them and maybe not him directly, but you know, the, the, the people at the clinic who knew. Well, I'm, I'm sure BJ, you know, while they're setting this up, they probably flew out there. The engineers, they got an education of chiropractic, you know, because right. just like you're saying, we're thinking like buying a laptop, you know, you just had the second machine ever made by these guys and they're going to, you know, there was a close communication and all those things. Absolutely. You know, that's like the beta test. Okay. Show me the bugs that you found. How can we improve all that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Now, the surface EMG, electromyography, isn't that a derivative of this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. All right. You want to read up a little bit more? Where are we? The bottom of 109? We could easily, yeah. Yep. And there we are. A little bit more, and then we, we can, can call it a night. You going on, Barry? Barry? Yep, you want to jump back? Yeah. Yep, we could easily imagine one of these doctors becoming lost in, in many so-called complications of his branch of work. But on the contrary, this clinic is organized so that he naturally associates his ideas and his work with general setup for general good of the clinic and patients. Many suggestions and ideas are exchanged between department heads who, and department heads who, see in others' work from outside, as it were, a see some improvement or change which could be made. There is such a thing as becoming so deeply absorbed in one type of work that we cannot see the real things about it. Sometimes it is the fellow who is doing some other type of work who sees something in our work which could be improved. To do good work, we must get away once in a while and look at our work from a distance. We must get perspective and vision, and that cannot come by sitting on top of our work too much. It comes by getting away now and then. Great words, BJ. The BJ Palmer BJ. Chiropractic Clinic, or chiropractic itself, so far as the Palmer School of Chiropractic is concerned, will never become lost in complications. And we tell you why. Chiropractic is based on a specific set of principles governing its practice. Regardless of scientific complications, this clinic has one fundamental principle and practice upon which results are obtained and that is the adjustment specific. One case doesn't get a treatment for this and another case a treatment for that. There is no treating effects with electricity, baths, message, or anything of that kind. There is no prescribing certain drugs for one condition and certain drugs for another. No complications of treatment in medical and other fields of healing are found in this clinic. All cases receive adjustment specific and obtain results through proper application of that specific principle and practice exclusively. Let's stop there. In this period. <laughs> I mean, that's a good spot Oops. right there. Period. You're not fooling around with anything else. We give them a specific adjustment and then we're monitoring them. I, volume 20 is like one of my favorite actually, because it's just those pre and posts, BJ Palmer Clinic, and, you know, he's adjustment specific. That is what he's talking about, especially in that last paragraph. What do you guys think? One case doesn't get treatment for this and another case treatment for that. Yeah. All yeah, cases that's... receive adjustment specific and obtain results through proper application of that specific principle 
and practice exclusively. What do you guys think of the word treatment that people use instead of adjustment? I'm going to say it out loud. It makes my skin crawl. <laughs> I can't stand it. And, you know, it is the direct antithesis of the philosophy of chiropractic. And BJ says it here. It is not a treatment for the, for the effects. There is no treating of effects with electricity, baths, and all these things. We get to the cause, adjust specifically. The treatment is for the you treat the sickness, not the, you, you adjust the person. The treatment is, it's, it's an oxymoronic for a chiropractor to say it. It drives me crazy. Anyway, that's my 11 cents. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, we, we, as we discussed a, a few days ago, a few weeks ago, it's the, the treatment, you know, we get, he talks about getting sick people well, but when he does, he is always talking about Removing interference and allowing innate to do the work. Adjusting the subluxation. Adjust, yeah. you know, it's never, it's, it's, we're not making the symptoms go away. He never says that. He talks about people want to get well, and we want to get people well. He says that. But it, it, that's become morphed into, we want to get people well. No matter what we do, we got to do. So we'll do whatever we do to make them feel better because that's making, well, that's not what's making them well. You can, you know, my people say, well, why don't you give people a lot of vitamins? They say, well, if you, is vitamin A toxic in high doses? And they go, yeah. I say, so if I'm giving somebody vitamin A and I adjust them and all of a sudden their body it, it can absorb it all, what happens? Does it become toxic sooner? Of course, well, the other side of that, which they never think of as well, if you're adjusting them, then they're gonna, the body's going to adapt and know it shouldn't be absorbing so much. But that's well, limitations <laughs> matter. If, it, if it's such a toxic dose, whether they're subluxated or not, it can be lethal, right? And, you know, sub, you know, the, the uh, but a subluxation, you know, is going to affect how we function. And that's where structure and function come in. And, uh, you know, that is... Steve's coming in, but we're going to end soon. Um, but, uh, you know, I, yeah, adjustments specific and obtain results through proper application of that specific principle and practice, practice, practice exclusively. It's a great ending sentence. Hey, buddy, yeah. how's it going, Steve? Just wanted to tuck you guys in. That's all. <laughs> we're just finishing up in you this. Finish in the yard. <laughs> Say what? what? Did you finish raking your yard? <laughs> no, man, it's two and a half acres, bro. <laughs> yeah, this last sentence, you can uh, you can even see this applied now to principled chiropractic practice or principled chiropractors because there are the surface EMG, there are the machines, there are, the, you know, we can test before and after adjustments. You know, it, you are fill, following the principles of chiropractic. A hundred percent. Absolutely. And using the technology and, you know, giving people an idea and also for the doctor to be the chiropractor to be able to see if that adjustment did anything. You know, let's be straight out. If it didn't clear a subluxation, ultimately it was a fixation and, and it didn't really do that much. Um, we can you know, see, and we can see, you know, with with some of the other things that people are being able to use, we can see things like heart rate variability change and, and stabilize, and and see the stress, the body stresses be changed uh, over time, and that's that's all good stuff to validate changes that the body is making based on, because you know, if if you think that my that little thing that I do with the activator. Is, is, is making a difference and you're crazier than I am. You know, it's, it's it, what's inside of you that it takes that force and makes the change. It's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you know, we also know that the surface EMG and the neural kilometer or the titron or any of these uh, proofs, our instrumentation, human instrumentation is so, so small compared to what we're doing it the, it's limited there's so you know there's so much that the adjustment does that the surface emg is just like a one little proof 
Oh yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, it's the small on. amount that we can measure of life. I mean, that's just it, it makes the scientists happy. Well, I mean, it's, it's 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 the small thing, really, of something that's gigantic, right? You know, it's the next state. What we're the things that we're doing. It, we're all trying to just carry on what 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 BJ started and find sound, sign, other scientific validation for the principles that we all know exist. Yeah, it's the, 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 it's much bigger than anything we can test at this time, but we can test and valid, we can use the electronics to as a validation to be able to show people sure. what's going on. Yeah. And, and, and sure. to make yourself feel, feel more confident in what we're doing. You know, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing I wrong have, with it, but let's put it in its proper perspective. I have a it's, question from uh, somebody from Mexico, and he wanted. He was supposed to be here tonight. I told him come in and ask yourself. But I, I want to ask this before we end tonight. And this is from BJ DD's nineteen fourteen. Um, I've translated it into Spanish into Portuguese, and so. There, but he's getting this from the English version. And I don't know what the KP luxation means, what it's supposed to be. Can you help me? Where is K, that? K dot P, P dot luxation. And that's page 16 of the chiropractor. And uh, is that, that like kidney that. place, Merrick system? No, I doubt that. Indeed, he's 1914. It's right at the, he sent me a copy of the page. Why not obtain knowledge regarding plethora of a, of a discharge of pus? Oh, margins of the gums, subcutaneous band because of a KP. I don't know what a KP subluxation is. I read through this and I'm not 100% what he's talking about. Uh, diseases but, of the sebaceous glands and some headaches are, are because of a KP subluxation. The two or more of these diseases may be associated, may be a result of over tension of the fibers of one nerve, which ramify the portions affected. I would imagine it's part of the Merrick system in the kidney plates. KP luxation. Let's think about that. Yeah. Let's I think it's a out. level of the spine. I'm going to, I got think I got to read that full chapter before that and see what's. Well, you know, that's my favorite chapter, but we'll see what's going on. Well, gentlemen, I had to ask that question. Forgive me, kind of talk, took us off topic. We had a pretty good cool We'll one. get back to him. <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. You didn't make it, so now you got to come and ask yourself. We'll, look at, we'll try and look into it. But we'll you have a lot. You guys don't realize how many people say, hey, I'm going to make it this week. I'm going to make it this week. Yeah. And we used to even have, we had, you know, we were translated into Spanish and Portuguese. We still do. And those guys listen. And I appreciate you. And I love you. And uh, join us. We're here Tuesdays. Everybody come. And uh, I appreciate you when you listen to, um, because we're on YouTube. And I've been a, bit, a little bit behind, but now we're set up for, you know, uh, the videos are going to be put right into the YouTube channel. And on Spotify and all the, the podcast places, this also goes on. So uh, I was a little bit behind. I got caught up in the posts. So they're all going to be live again. Actually, they already are. And uh, you so might, you can go back and listen to them. You might, um, going back to that KP luxation, you might send something to Dwayne and see if he has any thoughts on that. Oh, yeah, and reading through that chapter and go and looking exactly what it has. And yeah. uh, we missed Dwayne today, too. Gentlemen, been a pleasure. Wide, worldwide. God bless you all. Have a good night. It was my honor to be here with you all. Have a lovely week, and we'll get back to this next week. You got it, my man. Thank See you, you all. Next week. Hi, pie.